What's your value proposition? You cannot sell 100% of the product for 5% of the cost. Congratulations. You got a full replacement on your roof. We just showed up with a $15,000 check to your front door and gave it to you. Yeah. And nobody's ever done that for that customer in their entire lives. Customer is always right. True or false? If you look at our core values, profits is the last one. You've got to back it up with being a good person and providing a good quality product. Describe your partnership. The market is a meteor. And if you're not going to change with the market, you're going to be a dinosaur getting, getting wiped out by it. Is it possible to work, um, to run a roofing business and not to work with insurance companies? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. But you do 98% insurance claims. And yeah, I mean, we figured it's a superior model. You know, we don't have to go and battle three contractors estimates at the table. If we help the customer get the roof fully replaced or, you know, provide them the so information. So you do it because, to, because you don't have competition pretty much because you don't have to go against yeah, well, that, the, the, the customer has to pay their deductible, yeah. you know, and they, they save 95% off on their project. Mm. What, what kind of a salesman can't sell a roof that's 95% off? Oh, trust me, so yeah. many. So can. many, right? <laughs> and that's why they make laws against paying deductibles, especially in, you know, places like Texas and that. It's because you have to. I mean, if you cannot sell the something, what's your value proposition? You cannot sell 100% of the product <laughs> for 5% of the cost, and you have to give that for free? I mean, give me a break. I know. Know. People who can't do that don't work for our company, that's for sure. Well, and I'll tell you, and this is fun. It, 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 there's a lot of fun parts of this, too. Because when you, you're basically publisher's clearinghouse showing up with a big check. You just help that person. You know, we save an average homeowner around $15,000 a roof. We just showed up with a $15,000 check to your front door and gave it to you. Yeah. And nobody's ever done that for that customer in their entire lives. Nobody has ever done that. How often has somebody showed up to your house and handed you $15,000? You know, it feels good. And the customers get so excited about it, man. It, it, it feels good to help them, too. And, and I'll tell you what, the phone call, and I miss being a salesman in some of these aspects, because the phone call to the, the homeowner after you found out that, you know, the roof got replaced, and you say, congratulations, you got a full replacement on your roof, and to hear the joy in their voices, because yeah. uh, nobody's ever done things like that for them, is, is, it's a whole different feeling. And I think to go back to the customer experience portion, like we make sure that our guys are only calling in claims or helping customers file claims or providing the information for customers to file claims if, if, they're, if it's warranted. You know, We're not going out there advising every customer to call in a claim. It's, it's if it's warranted, and we have a very high conversion ratio for customers that file a claim to a full replacement, and that's what also comes with those good reviews. Vandalism in roofing is based off of two things, greed and laziness. I would agree. There's damage everywhere. Get your ass off of that roof if it doesn't have damage, and go and knock on the neighbor's roof that possibly does. Go to a different area. Shit, go to a different state if you can't find it. There's plenty of people down in Texas that get hit with four inch hail balls and you don't gotta do anything wrong <laughs> other than go help them put a brand new roof on their house. Well, sometimes it's desperation, sometimes it's drugs, sometimes it's substances, sometimes it's like, I have to make it today, here's in front of me, I crisp the shingle, I'm done. Yeah, and, there's a, and that's another thing. There is a lot, because there's no barriers to entry in roofing in most instances. Most states don't require state licensing, this and that. And there are a lot of uh, recovering, you know, drug addicts or alcoholics or, you know, what, what have you that, that end up getting into the industry. And they're not all, they're not all bad. There's good, there's good people, there's bad people. Um, but we do see, you do see quite a bit of that uh, around the country where, where they, yeah. they start making money in a, in a you know, the business and, and they start doing well. And then they fall back into those uh, um, things that they were doing before, you know, back into those destructive habits yeah, that they we, have. We don't understand vandalism. We have a no tolerance for it. You know, if we ever find that somebody's doing it with our own organization and it almost never happens, immediately terminated, you know. So like I said, checks and balances. Yeah. If you own a roofing company, you should have those things in place in your company too, to make sure you're doing the right thing, to make sure that you're keeping your relationships with insurance adjusters and insurance companies as a whole. It has to be like that. Yeah. Customer is always right. True or false? True. 
True, uh, it, true on a standpoint of customer service. Yes. Is it always true? Of course not. You no. know, there's some unreasonable customers out there. We get one every year. I mean, we have no. a 4.9 out of five on the BBB, right? So there's a few reviews on there that are <laughs> five out of five, and we provide a very superior customer experience product. Yeah. So we did just have a, a a guy that was very unhappy at first, and we went out and did work for him for free, but he wanted work done for free. Um, and basically, when we come back to the office, it's, hey, are we going to provide this customer with what he wants to satisfy him, or are we not? And a lot of roofers, a lot of business owners, they draw a line in the sand and they say, I'm not doing that. That's free. Well, shit. We're like, hey, it's $200. You know, the gentleman's paying us $15,000 for yeah. his roof. We're more than happy to go out and just, just help him. And guess what? Then we have a happy customer that wants to leave us a good review online, that wants to send us referrals. You know, this isn't all about money. That's the problem. Everybody looks at a business, looks at an, into the roofing community and sees it as this great way to just make all this money. And you've got to back it up with being a good person and providing a good quality product to people. Bending over backwards for your customer translates into more money though. It translates into more opportunities for Absolutely. our guys. And you know, when you can point a customer to a BBB or a Google where you have a 4.9 out of five and your competition does not, which ours in our area does not, it's pretty powerful. Yeah. Describe your partnership. Like how do you fire use? nice? Fire uh, nice. Who, is, who is fire? No, who is if we're the complete yeah, look, look at us and how we're sitting right now. That should tell you a whole lot about who we are. Personality-wise, I'd say we're, <laughs> we're we're definitely different. We we kind of complement each other that way. He focuses on different things than I focus on, and it just actually works really well. It's, it's amazing that the the intermediary between both of our ideas ends up almost always being the right direction. Yeah. And, and if one of us has a, a, hey, I want to do something this way, I have this big idea, whatever else, and the other one actually, you know, we'll, we play devil's advocate against each other. Okay, well, what about this? Well, what about this? Yeah. Well, if the, if the reward so, you know, highly outweighs the risk, we try new things. I mean, that's what we do. I don't think it would have worked as well if we didn't have such a strong moral fiber, too. You know, we're always trying to do the right thing yeah. by our customers, by our sales guys, by our W2 staff, by our own families. Um, so it's just... I'll tell you what, coming to, the wor coming to work and seeing smiles on every single person's face, I know it's the most cliche thing out there, be, oh, our company culture is the best, our company culture. We freaking love coming to work. We have people in our office, almost everyone, that absolutely loves every single day they spend in the office and they don't feel like it's work. Our first com core value at our company is uh, personal happiness. Because if you're not happy in your personal life, you're not going to be happy in the office. You're not going to be happy at work. So we, we you know, and yeah. sometimes we kind of go outside the box and we like to help people in their personal lives too if they if they need need help. I mean, we do. Yeah. Um, you know, actually, if you look at our core values, profits is the last one. Yeah. Because we still got to run the business. Business has still got to got to work and bring in money, but it's the absolute last one. Uh, because it, it, you know, if you have happy employees and you provide them a great place to work work actually gets done. And if you actually look at studies, yeah. the efficiency of a happy, uh, happy employee is far, far greater than somebody who comes to work and, and hates, work, hates their job, hates their boss. And we try not to be boss. Well, I we, might be you know, know, boss. Yeah, we quickly learned that profits weren't gonna fuel our train for you know, 100 million, $1 billion in a roofing company for us. It was to see people within our organization grow which was really the most powerful thing. I mean, we're obsessed with, you know, bringing in new guys and watching them hit their personal and professional goals that they have in place. Our managers are obsessed with that. And that's actually look for the qualities we look for in people that are future branch leaders, future managers within our company is somebody that wants to help that person grow within the organization. And we have such a great company culture in our office, not only for our 1099s, but also our W-2 employees as well. And that's that's our favorite thing about the business. We end up hiring a lot of our sales guys from the gym too. It just naturally happens. Uh, we, you know, we are also you know gym rats too, so we're, we're like-minded, <laughs> but they carry all the things that you already want in a great sales guy. They're habitual, they're addicted. They're addicted to working out. Yeah. They, love, they love working mm -hmm. out. You Do know? you have a gym at work? Uh, we we're, we'll get there. We're building the lifetime quality gym in the next <laughs> building. Uh, no, we, we for liability purposes, do we don't. We right didn't now. do it. Yeah, building yeah. lifetime gym. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
W two or ten ninety nine for sales gates. Ten ninety nine. Ten ninety nines. Yeah. Ten ninety nines. Yeah. yeah, we like we like the ability to hand them preferential, you know, for them to be able to set themselves up as as miniature businesses with within our business. But they also get a lot of ta uh, preferential tax treatment from it. Yeah, but know? revenue so. over profit or uh, paid on, um, you know, re revenue is the basis of the scale how we do people's pay. Yeah. Um, we don't pay off profit of the job, and we feel that that's an inferior way to do it. You know, every contractor you ever talked about that comes from another company, they're like, you know, how was your experience there? And they're like, well, they screwed me out of money. Yep. You know, and they think that because they don't really know if they're getting true figures on the back ends of their jobs. So we did away with that. We said we want to be as transparent as possible for all of our people to keep the company culture and the morale as high as they can. If you get a check, you turn a check in, you get paid a check. Yep. It's very straightforward so that way. Percentage of the top. Yeah. So we did a we did a large enough sample sizing uh, for you know spanning every roof we've ever done, and you know people are out there paying fifty percent. I pay fifty percent to all my sales guys, fifty percent profit margins. Well, we've been approached by building suppliers that have said, yeah. "Hey, I'll charge you ten dollars more a square for shingles, so that you guys can get a bigger rebate on the back end." And we looked at them and said, "Why the hell would we do that? Like, why, why would we do that?" And he said, "Well, yeah, you don't you guys pay your pay your sales guys off profit." No, we pay them off revenue. We'll pay the same price we're paying now. Thanks. Actually, we'll pay less if you're willing to do it because your competitor is, and then yeah. you'll get better pricing. But, um, but yeah, no, it, it just doesn't make any sense. So you turn a check in. We want to pay you. We like to be very upfront about everything. There's nothing hidden we do at our business. Uh, we try to try to keep transparency uh, at, at every level. Uh, we like guys to know exactly what's going on within the business. If something's going on with their job, we try to make sure every single yeah. thing that goes on with that job is noted into our CRM so that they're fully aware. The customer's fully aware. We show the communications to the customers in every facet of our business. Uh, you know, we, we just try to go above and beyond. Like I said, I'll over communicate to a customer before I'll under, under communicate. Right. So. How different is Florida market from Ohio market? It wild, is wild the west. wild, wild west, man. It's completely different. Oh yeah. yeah. Which one do you like better? Probably Columbus. Yeah. Uh, Ohio market is. Yeah. We're expanding into Cincinnati and other like markets um, like Columbus and. I mean, you like just, me the best better? Yeah, it's, mm. it's different. You know, I feel like we have a good relationship with insurance companies there not that we don't have a good relationship in florida it's just harder to work with insurance yeah. companies you know it's, we, it's we, different we say that we work hand in hand and that's what we tell customers too yeah. hey we're going to work hand in hand with your insurance provider to, to help you you know and all the adjusters really like working with us another thing when we send in a supplement we're not the typical roofer that just sends in hey here's these line items like pay for it we send in documentation of every single yeah. thing that we do. We have our own company representatives on site, our, our you know construction managers that are on site every single one of our projects, providing quality control checks, yeah. making sure there's not trash in the yard, communicating to the customer. We we actually you know, crazy enough, if there's an issue because this is construction, things happen. You know, you damage a gutter, you know, you, a shingle falls down, scratches a piece of siding. We want to be able to tell that homeowner and communicate to them that we did something wrong and we're going to fix it before they see it. We don't want our customers to see that kind of stuff. And we document every single thing we do so that when, you know, if an insurance adjuster asks for documentation, when we send in, hey, we had to do these couple extra things, here is every piece of documentation, every photo on, on site, here's all the measurements, here's all the pieces of code, here's everything that you need to show this basically to your manager and get this approved. And, and you know, that's what we try to do. It doesn't make any sense to, for us to do it any other way. And we don't understand why people don't do it that way. Since you're from Columbus, I have to ask, what's your take on the roof max and the rejuvenation, rejuvenation in general? I watched your interview with Mike Fiesel and it's very, it's a very interesting product. We don't know, I don't really know enough about it to, to speak about it. Um, I think it could, it makes sense in theory that it could potentially work. We don't offer it or offer any products like that. You know, we prefer for a customer that if their roof is getting to the point where it needs to be replaced, instead of trying to rejuvenate it, they replace their roof. I mean, you're protecting your number one asset. So that, that's our kind of feelings towards it. But yeah, I don't really know enough about it. Yeah, as long as the savings are relative, you know, I don't want to speculate on, on whether they are or aren't, but you know, from the, actually from the interview I saw, he seems like a really good guy and out there trying to help people and provide a good quality product. So, uh, you know, we hope he is. I I know, just curious, if you're in the same market and yeah. Yeah. there's a lot of roof maxes here. Yeah. Uh, we've ran into, ran into a couple and you know. I mean, we're insurance restoration specialists, so we feel like 
once a customer has a roof that's close but maybe doesn't have the damage and they sign that no damage form but the next storm comes through it's probably going to affect their house we're probably going to have the ability to you know give that customer the information they need to file a claim so um, by spraying it with rejuvenation product it's kind of counter and productive to our and counterproductive yeah. to our to our business so yeah no, no, he seems like a good guy. If it actually, uh, if it actually works for the homeowner, and like I said, dollars and cents wise, and ends up saving them money in the long run, I'm all for it. Who makes the best asphalt shingle? I knew Owens you were Corning. Go there. <laughs> uh, we we do sell Owens Corning. We do feel they provide a very very high quality product. Um, GAF provides a, a pretty decent product. Uh, we've definitely yeah. used them in the past. Um, all their all their people that work for them are really good people, and I believe they are all trying to do the right thing. Uh, market's kind of tough and trying to figure out who's the best. I see some of your videos, and um, I, I know that some of them are putting out marketing that would you know kind of. Well, counter it, some of their their marketing that they're putting out i think so. it goes a little bit further than that we've had a lot of experience with owens corning they have you know plants right in granville not too far from us and their headquarters is in toledo and we've yeah. actually gone up there and talked to their their executives and seen their process and um we've had firsthand experience just dealing with the quality that they produce so that's why we're a platinum contractor and we mostly use oc mm -hmm. But I mean, you know, there's allocation issues right now, so we'll yeah. use you know yeah. all the the top yeah. products that are out there when, when we have to. Yeah. And we there, want to keep a relationship with all of the the manufacturers. There's also a research and development plant uh, in Granville, Ohio, which is right outside of Columbus, yeah. uh, which is OC's development plant, and uh, they've actually sent us pallets of product uh, to test yeah. field test in the field. They send out quality control people to stand out there and ask the installers, hey, what do you think about this? How does this work? Um, and really try to try to build a build a very very good product before they put it into the marketplace. Um, there's a gentleman that was in the uh, RF, no, sorry, FRSA Expo today um, that was standing there with, you know, I think it was Rhino, representing Rhino Roof, yeah. which is an OC product, um, and PSU, I think PSU 30, 30 yeah. uh, the titanium product. Mm -hmm. um, we're actually some of the roofers that, that tested that in the field, and it works very, very well. Yeah. You know, just, you know, just we like love a nice that aspect product, of what so. they do. They, they give you a product, they allow you to install it and see how it works and then give feedback, and then they actually go and they change things on that product. Yeah. Um, so that's a, that's a really awesome experience for us as contractors because we use so much of it, we wanna make sure we're using the best quality products for our customers at all times because we stand behind the warranties that they offer. And I'm sure you're aware of uh, duration shingles, right? Sure nail strip. So on uh, some mansard installation, installations, we followed the manufacturer's installation instructions to a T. And what we started realizing was that some of the shingles um, where the, the two layers overlap in the common, common nailing area, um, they were actually shooting above uh, the bottom layer of shingle. Uh, so they actually move the sure nail strip down on those shingles so that when you're actually driving that nail through the bottom yeah. of the sure nail strip, it would hit that common common nailing area in both, both pieces of those shingles. Um, so it was cool to see, hey, this was our feedback on your product. Yeah. This is, what, this is the issue we were running into it. and them actually go change it and fix it because of us. And we installed, you know, 40,000 squares, so 4 million square feet of, of shingles last year. So it's very important that, you know, when we raise a concern that they're actually willing to, to go yeah, out and fix it. Listen, yeah. yeah, listen and, and, and help, us, help us fix it, so. There's a lot of hate in the industry towards guys like yourself, myself. People say, you're not real roofers, you're a paper conduit, like, because you don't have the background. You're the business owner, right? What do you answer to those hate comments? Maybe, um, you know, people say that, oh, you're just a marketing company. You're just sales organization. And I was a roofer. I roofed at 18. I installed, I tore roofs off. I mean, I had a roofing background and then just so happens that years later, you know, I came, I came back into it, you know, so. And the I, reason I bring it because I see this, you know, internal, like almost, uh, there's a culture within the culture I see roofers fighting storm chasers and then within retail roofers we have this mega company smaller companies and just too many groups yeah. like we try at roofing insights we're trying to unite like startups like there's no there's no such a thing as a good size like for you, for me three million dollar could be my happy place for you it could be 30 million yeah. but you know different than me it's just i found myself maybe i'm a different market like I think for, for those guys, you know, you have to kind of get outside yourself and, and be different and try something new. You know, a lot of those guys are stuck in the mud. Like we said, they're doing archaic forms. Probably some of those people still use the yellow pages. 
I don't know if nobody knows, but not many people will look at the Yellow Pages anymore. So it was just like I was talking to my wife the other day. She's in the real estate market and she's in the commercial real estate market. And they literally told her, well, we don't utilize social media at all all these guys are over 50, 60 years old and they don't use social media because it's a new progressive way to market to, to their clients. And it's, it's something that people have to adapt to. We're younger, we're of the younger generation. We're always gonna be into progressive forms of marketing and what is new um, because it works. The market is a meteor. And if you're not gonna change with the market, you're gonna be a dinosaur getting, getting wiped out by it. And well it's said. that simple. Well said. Do you have cancellation fee in your contract? We do. We do. How much is a cancellation fee? It's a percentage of the claim. Thirty-five yeah. percent, but we have n we have never enforced it because. Do you have complaints about it? Never. Yeah. I don't think so. I don't think people would freak out. Thirty-five percent. Why thirty-five yeah. percent? Why so steep? Our, that's what our lawyer wrote up. Yeah. yeah. So we. I mean, we do. So this year, we really just we really just want the per people to work with us, and a lot of times, I, I'll tell you exactly what it is. There are bad bad contractors in our our area that are willing to pay deductibles. That's what it is. So when we have a cancellation fee, and the cancellation fee ends up being more than if somebody ate their deductible, yeah. it makes more sense to just use us. We, it's all about agreements, and doing you know doing what you say you're going to do. And when we meet with a customer and we say, hey. This is what we're going to do. You have damage on your roof. We're going to help you get your roof replaced, you know, so forth and so on. But the only thing we ask is if we get your roof replacement, you use us to do the roof. Well, 99% of uh, customers yeah. are like, yeah, absolutely. You're the one out here helping me. You just gave me, you just handed me this $15,000 check that, that I didn't have the opportunity of getting before. And then, and then you know, the only thing they have to do is pay their deductible, which they agreed to on the front end, because we're upfront about everything. You know, your out-of-pocket cost in most instances is just going to be your deductible. We have it's a very, always. very low percentage of people that cancel. I think oh my this year we're Super on par low. to do, we'll have about 30, over 3,000 um, insurance claims filed in the, in, just in the Columbus area. And last year, I think we had about 2,400. And I think we had maybe eight cancellations out of that. Mm -hmm. So it's not something we see very often. And sometimes it's a it's a scare tactic thing. Like they'll call their insurance agent once the insurance agent sees that they filed a claim, yeah. and then they'll say, "Oh, you can't you can't just sign this thing, the service agreement. You got to get three estimates and all this stuff." And they get scared, and then they'll they, they've canceled. And we've had that happen. Yeah. And then 99% of those people end up using us to do their roof anyway. So you know. Okay. I was just curious because the problem of what you described is real. So many like. I work with a lot of contractors on the consulting level and people come to me and like, I lost the contract, what do I do? And I'm like, did you collect deductible? Did you sign a contract? They, they wouldn't sign. I'm like, of course you're going to lose it. You know, why would they use you? Like, you don't have anything in writing. You don't We're have pretty deductible. hard on our guys about that one. So yeah. if you don't get a contract signed with a customer, you don't do work for them. If they're not willing to sign that, they're probably not going to get the job once you get the roof exactly. replaced. And, and, it's very and people important. are so de delusional. Like, oh, they told me. No, they didn't. If you cannot get the signature, they're not gonna know. Yeah, absolutely. People wanna wanna think that oh well, if I get it done for them, because they're sales gonna use me. delusional, and yeah. business owners too. We think we're better than we are. And we have guys mm -hmm. that have hard lessons like that, and it's like we told you so, guys. We put these things in place not to hurt you and not to make you do things that you don't want to do. It's because they work. Do you have non-compete agreements with your sales guys? We do. We do. Um, On a year. Yeah. Yeah. Do you enforce that? Uh, we do. We do. Uh, only if they're competing directly in, you know, in our market. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to, but if we're, te we, we do do things differently than other companies. Uh, we, have we have proprietary information. Uh, all of our processes, we built every single thing in our company by hand. We didn't have somebody hand us a playbook and say, hey, follow this playbook yeah. and you're gonna be successful. We've done all this hard work ourselves and, and we hold that hold that very close to the chest. Well, and like we chest. said earlier, yeah. a lot of our guys that come in are, are green. They don't have any experience and we're giving them all the proprietary information that we've collected you over. Don't like your competition. Exactly, yeah, and so he's right. You know, we, don't, we, we do enforce it in the markets in which we work. Yeah. But if somebody wants to pick up and say, hey, I want to go to Iowa uh, or I want to go, you know, outside where you guys are working, more power to them. And yeah. we wish them all the best. Yeah. Because, hey, if it doesn't work out, I'd like that person to come back. If they're, if they're a good salesman, they did a good job, they're a good person, you know. And if they're we not try a good not to salesman, burn. 
Yeah, See you later. Yeah, that's true. We try not to burn bridges, though. I mean, not all bridges need burnt. I don't care if other people eat, just sometimes I don't want them to eat at my table. Well said. <laughs> uh, are you a commodity business? Mm. I actually have, I, I don't know how you want me to answer that question. What, what, do you, what do you mean? Like, are you in commodity business? Uh, meaning, you know, like commodity business would be something that, you know, like if you sell gas, it's a commodity. You know, like you sell a commodity and as long as supply lasts, you have it. If you don't, you don't. It's kind of... That's a tough, that's, yeah. It's a weird commodity business. So, I, like, like, I mean, sh everybody, like everybody... shingles is commodity business. Yes, it goes I agree. up, up so, and down. Um, well, if they stop making shingles and we stop having access to shingles, yeah, we're, our business is probably going to shut down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that would probably happen. So I, I guess the answer to that is yeah. Um, I think we've gotten as close to that that we can possibly get to during COVID. I mean, yeah. I don't know how much you know you experienced or other people has experienced in the industry, but we were hit pretty hard in Ohio. For one month of OC shutting down their plants and several other manufacturers, we saw almost to the point where there wasn't any allocations for any other contractors in the area. I mean, we're a big buyer of OC and we buy all the OC in our region or almost all of it. I'm sure they give it to some other people, but you know, we, we buy a lot of OC and, and there's just not enough for us to go around. So that's why we have to build relationships with these other manufacturers because we got to build roofs. And if OC is watching any of this, send us more trucks. Please. So, <laughs> love it. And, and, and I know they do. So OC is sending trucks. I second that. <laughs> Well, the, the thing is, um, roofers hate to admit it, but we, we do have tradesmen. You know, you have like metal guys, you have guys who work yeah. with copper, it's sure. late. And, you know, when you're a tradesman, when you're a craftsman, you're not a commodity business. You know, like today you install shingles, tomorrow you do metal, day after tomorrow you do clay tile. Or you start making your own clay tiles. I don't know. <laughs> like yeah. when you're a tradesman, you will figure it out. You're a career craftsman. When you commodity business, it's it's raw materials and you depend on them. Sure. And you know, like what's happening with the shingle market, the, if they don't have one accessory, like one um, something in the recipe of the shingle, yeah. that's it. They're done. Yeah. You know, because it, it's a very very vulnerable business to be in the commodity business. Sure. That's a, I mean, that's a tough one. I think you, you know, if you, there's no more asphalt shingles, then all the roofs are going to be metal eventually, right? So then we'll get into metal. And, and, and yeah. we're metal right now, you know. So, so some roofers would uh, answer it that we're not in commodity business because we're in the service business yeah. and people still need it and yeah. you know still do repairs. Everybody has homes. I mean, everybody should have mm -hmm. sent us that question ahead of time. Yeah, <laughs> I would have liked to prepare for that one. Give one advice to the homeowner who about to hire a contractor. Do your research. If you can get a hold of actual customer uh, customers that you can speak to about the the work that they've done yeah. for them, I know that if you ask the contractor, yeah. yeah, reference. I know if you ask the contractor, they're going to give you the absolute best people and best experiences. But that's why you go online anymore. You know, yeah. uh, uh, you know, if you think about it, 30, 40 years ago, if you were growing a business. There were two ways to grow your business, and it was referrals, or you're putting ads in the yellow pages, or, or you're doing TV, or whatever else. Now everybody with a cell phone, everybody with a computer can quickly go online and look your business up like that. Yeah. But that's ah, Yelp. Uh, but that's why that's why you go above and beyond to provide a, a superior service to your customers, and you care about their experience and that they're satisfied at the end of the day. Because if you don't. They're going to destroy you online. They're going to destroy you. Yeah. And there's a lot of, uh, so this is one thing that, that we talked about uh, prior, and it was um, don't grow your business too fast. Yeah. Don't grow your business too fast. It's, it's easy to hire 50 freaking sales guys and go out and just produce all kinds of work, but as soon as you do that, you're going to destroy your reviews online because you're not going to be able to service those customers. And there's no process. comeback. Once yeah, you're a two-star no con contractor, you're done. Yeah, so that's what happens to a lot of storm chasers. Yeah. I like, uh, you know. Yeah, but more... they close down and start another company with a different name, and then. Yeah, to get more technical from a home for a homeowner, um, I would tell your homeowner because they can get on and they can look at reviews online, right? But they they're not speaking to actual people that have had interactions. And to get a referral, that's hard if you don't know anybody that's never used the company before. Mm -hmm. So use like Nextdoor. You know, we use Nextdoor a ton in our business to try to generate because it's essentially Facebook for neighborhoods mm -hmm. and everybody that knows each other in the neighborhood and we're in most yep. of all the neighborhoods. So if these people mm -hmm. look up, you know, the company or ask people within their neighborhood or put it something out in the post, 
they're going to find information about our company. So that's where I would direct homeowners is more of a, uh, a neighborhood focused um, referral system. Yeah. Well, you're going to definitely guarantee you probably get somebody local in those instances too. Absolutely.